Mental health care services are on the chopping block yet again, both in Chicago and around the state. Well, joining me now to talk about mental health cuts are Nadonna Carter. She's an organizer with Southside Together, organizing for power. That's known more quickly as STOP. She's also a spokesperson for mental health, the mental health movement. And Ann Irving joins me. She's the director of public policy for AFSCME Council 31. Ladies, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. My pleasure. And let me begin uh, by talking to you. I, I, you know, whenever I talk about this, this issue, I always feel people don't really get the gravity of uh, the import of cutting uh, mental health services. Uh, would, would you just outline briefly, uh, statistically, or however you want to do it, why this is an issue people need to care about more than they seem to? Uh, you know, it's true. There, are, um, The statistics show that, that some 70% uh, of folks in their lifetime will be touched by uh, mental illness or issues related to mental illness and uh, I think the what's so key for people to understand is um, mental illness is highly highly treatable um, what we need to have are a system of care where folks can receive services on an outpatient basis just as anybody with a chronic illness would uh, and we also need to have an opportunity for people if they hit a chronic uh, uh, and, and acute phase of their illness where they're able to um, get inpatient services um, when they need that level of intensive care. We need a continuum of care, uh, and that's what's under attack. Okay, and you know, it seems every time, like, you know, it seems, hey, didn't the governor save the day? Yeah, he did, except, read further, and there are a couple of facilities that will be closing in July. Tinley Park, Jacksonville, both will close. Now, Donna, let me come to you, because in addition to being an organizer and doing some, some great work, you actually have a personal story to be told uh, related to this issue. To, briefly tell us your story. Well, first of all, I'm a consumer at one of the public health clinics. And although I have a great deal of education, we all fall down. And my falling down required me to have medical treatment, mental health treatment. I couldn't afford to go to any place, so I ended up going to a public health clinic that took me off the chopping block of my desire to kill myself. A lot of things were happening. My therapist helped me. She helped me walk through some of the problems that I was having, and four years later, I'm able to process things easier do you and have any, work just, through my challenges. Out of curiosity, do you have insurance, Nadana, that covered that? No, I don't. Okay, Amy, let me come to you, or Ann, I'm sorry, let me come to you because, um, I mean, that's part of the problem, right? I mean, once uh, the, the health care plan, the new health care plan takes effect, it isn't until 2014, there is some necessary assistance there, right? But things may be, it may be too late before that help gets here. Well, precisely right. We have both the city of Chicago and the state of Illinois cutting both outpatient services and inpatient services for people with mental illness. And these cuts are taking place now, not in 2014, where some more people may be able to receive coverage. So um, the mental health movement, our union, mental health advocates and consumers are saying, um, let's step back from these cuts currently. Let's ensure that there is a safety net available for everyone. Um, because frankly, if there isn't, there are real repercussions for our city and our state. And, and Nadana, you know, there's some people, you know, even in the Republican side of the debate, some are saying, look, if you don't have health care, your problem, the, the state shouldn't take care of you. What's your thought about that? Do we have an obligation to help people in need who aren't insured? The reason you have an obligation is because all of those people that are not insured still pay taxes. And all the money that's being given to government programs and to private industry are government dollars. The taxpayers are paying them. Every time you buy something, you pay taxes. Fair enough. Uh, I, I want to thank you both, and, and Nadana, certainly you for telling your story, and I'm glad you're okay, and glad things are, are, are working well for you and you're healthy. Nadana Carter, an organizer with Southside Together, organizing for power, and Ann Irving, director of public policy for Ask Me Council 31. I'm sure we're going to both uh, talk to you both as time goes on, because this issue is not going away anytime soon. That's right. Thank you thank so much. You. All thank right. you. And thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, Bill Mahler in for me tomorrow night. I'll see you on Wednesday night. Have a good night.